In this video, we are going to talk about transactions in SQLite. Transactions are useful for when you want to execute multiple operations at the same time or you don't want to execute them at all. There is a famous example about transactions and that's when you want to transfer some money. For that, the bank needs to deduct the amount from the sender's account. After that, it needs to add it to the receiver's account. Imagine that during this process, the bank's database crashes. For example, when it has deducted the amount from the sender's account, but it didn't add it to the receiver's account. In this case, the bank's database is not reliable and the money has been lost forever. In that case, we can use transactions. We can say execute the two operations at the same time or don't execute it at all. And here is how we can use transactions. First of all, we need to open a new session by typing begin that simple phrase after that we can pass our operations one by one in this case i have created a simple database called test first of all i'm going to update the brad's name after that i'm going to delete mason from my table these two operations are not dependent to each other but just for the sake of simplicity i'm going to do two operations in this transaction let's say update test the name of our table let's say set name to Tom. After that, let's say where name is equal to Brad. This is our first operation. After that, I'm going to delete Mason from this table. Let's say delete from test where name is Mason. Right now, if I execute a query on my table, you would see that there is only one record in my table and the name for that record is Tom. Let's quickly see that. Let's say select a star from test. You can see that we have only one record but because it's a session that we started above in here we need to commit the changes in order to commit them in our database so whenever you are using transactions you are responsible for the result of that transaction you can use two keywords for the result of your transaction commit and rollback commit is for when your operation is successful and rollback is for failed situations for example if i say rollback in here it will roll back every operation until the beginning of our session. Let's try that and see how is it going to look. So before we begin our session, we had two records in our table. And if we try executing a new query in here, for example, let's say select the star from test, we should see those two records. And as you can see, they do exist in our table. But if we open a new session by saying begin, if we provide our operations, for example, that update and delete, and after our job is done, if we say commit, the changes has been made to our database successfully. We can try that by saying select a star from test. You can see that this time Mason has been removed and Brad's name has been changed to Tom. When you are using this kind of rollback, every operation until the beginning of this session will be reversed but if you don't want this behavior and you want to roll back until a certain point in your operations you can use the save point keyword let's quickly try that for example first of all i'm going to open a new session let's try inserting a new record to our table after inserting this record i'm going to add a new save point in here let's say save point I need to provide a name for this save point, let's say first. After that, let's try deleting Tom from our database. I'm going to say delete from test, let's say where name is Tom. This time, instead of using this rollback for failed situation, I can say rollback to, and after that, we need to provide the name of our save point. For example, in this case, I can say first. If we execute a query on our table, we can see the result. Let's quickly do that. Let's say select a star from test. You can see that even though we have deleted Tom from our database, because we are now rolling back to the first save point, we are seeing Tom in here. And also in our session, we have inserted Sarah. So we are seeing Sarah in our table as well. By default, when you are using SQLite commands and you don't provide any transaction and session, SQLite would consider all of your SQL statement as a whole transaction. So it would add a begin at the beginning of your statement. And also in case if it's a successful execution, it would add commit at the end of that statement. 
In case something wrong happens, it will roll back every changes in your database. Okay, this was our quick talk about transactions in SQLite. In the next video, we are going to start talking about triggers. See you in the next video.